In a previous video, we used the event structure to listen to user events, specifically mouse clicks. So currently, every time we click a button on our front panel of our calculator, it prints that button to the display. Let's add some functionality to this calculator. In the event structure, I currently have these cases, one for the number buttons, one for the operations, one for the decimal, and one for clear. Let's first take a look at the timeout that we fed to the event structure and remove it. Calculators don't typically timeout. Next, we need to think about the numbers that the user's inputting. We want to put them into a list or an array. This will allow us to hold larger numbers to keep track of place value. Now, I said an array, but really I think I'm going to use a string. And a string is just an array of, of characters. And the reason why I want to use strings is because LabVIEW already has VIs for converting strings into numbers. Let's start with a string constant holding zero because that'll be our initial value whenever we start using the calculator. Now we want to wire that into our while loop and into our event structure and we want it to keep getting updated. So we want to right click and change that into a shift register so every time it loops it'll keep updating that value. First it'll be a zero, then it will run into the loop and be updated with user input. Let's work on our first button. Let's use the clear button. When this button's clicked, we don't want to have clear displayed. We want it to set the initial value back to zero and display that. So we got a couple options. One way would be to grab a wire from that initial value of zero, wire it inside to this case statement, and give it to the shift register on the right. Next, now that that's finished, let's go to the event case for handling the numeric input. This is still a case where we want to use the text on the button label and append that to our list of digits entered by the user. So go into string and we want to concatenate that onto the end of the existing string. So the concatenate block must first get the user input from the shift register and then the input from the button label. I'm going to quickly fix some broken wires. Let's save our work and then let's try what we have so far. So I click run, press my clear button, and you see that the value is now set back to zero. You can also see that the numbers are now being appended, but that the zero isn't being replaced. So we need to handle the situation where the number is zero. We don't want to add another number on to the end of it. We want to replace it. This is a good opportunity to use the select VI from the comparison palette. We can test to see if the existing user input is equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, that's true, we will do one thing. If it is not true, then we will do something different. So we're going to compare the user input and see if it's equal to zero. Currently the user input is a string, it's not really a number, so we need to go into the string number conversions palette and find the VI that will convert a string into a number. So pass the user input into it, 
test to see if it's equal to zero. Now, if it's equal to zero, we only want to return the new user input only. So we'll wire that into the true node. If it's not equal to zero, then we want to take our existing code that appends or concatenates the old value with the new value and pass that to false. Take the result from the select vi and pass that in. So clear. And you can see it's not working. That means that something's wrong with our test. It still thinks that it's not equal to zero. So we need to go check our wiring. You can see that on this VI it has two outputs, the offset and the number, and I had accidentally wired to the offset, not the actual value from the string. Now you can see that the inputs are working correctly.